The concept of the paper breastplate can be understood in a couple of ways. But in order to get a better understanding of what we're looking at, we should know what a distributed denial of service attack is, or DDoS. According to Cloudflare.com, a distributed denial of service attack, DDoS, is a malicious attempt to disrupt the, norm disrupt the normal traffic of a targeted server, service, or network by overwhelming the target of, or its surrounding infrastructure with a flood of internet traffic, DDoS attacks achieve effectiveness by using multiple compromised computers. <laughs> of course, this is for the internet, but it can also relate to many other things which include paper. So, in order to construct the paper breastplate, as it were, it is required that there be a lot of paper to form its links, essentially. Think about like overlapping plates of lamellar or some other sort of overlapping chain mail, perhaps. Armor, well, the breastplate's made up of overlapping, I mean, a lot of overlapping paper. Now, the first objective of this mechanism of the paper breastplate is the f a flood of forgeries to construct that distributed denial of service. That way you don't know what's legitimate, what's not legitimate. It's just simply an overwhelming flood of forged documentation. Fraud, right? Overwhelming flood of fraud. We see this all the time with fraudsters today where you get an overwhelming flood of, uh, you know, fraudulent scam calls and text messages and all this other stuff and it overwhelms you well this in the context of this video is the same idea but done with paper the second objective of this mechanism is to divert attention away from the mechanism itself to somewhere else so that people incorrectly target a different uh a different uh, cause, right? They don't identify the correct cause because the correct cause will dr distract their attention somewhere else so that those people then go attack that thinking that's the cause and it doesn't fix anything, of course, because the the uh, fake cause where the dis attention is distracted to was constructed by them using their flood of forgeries from the first objective. And the third objective is that while everyone's distracted and overwhelmed with forged documents, you me leverage that mechanism to steal everything under the elements of forgery. People today are trained to fear, right? To fear. This is a, a, a these are acts of terrorism, but there there's more a more important criminal conspiracy here going on. Well, people are trained to fear certain titles and letterheads and certain stamps on paperwork. The names of things, the entity itself, people are trained to fear. This stuff is so effective because so many people today will give in to quote unquote legal notices, right? And they are also trained, we're all trained, to believe essentially that legal notices can only come from one source and if it comes from anywhere else then it holds no weight. Now if somebody was to read a legal notice that was not written by one of them, but held more weight and was a legitimate thing, well, some might ignore it. Others might look at it and say, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this, right? Either way, their mechanism is designed to take everything from the area, leveraging their forgery mechanism after they've set up the first two objectives, one and two. The third one, of course, is to take. Now, one of the more important regions in the world for this is the so-called Northwest region of the United States. And a lot of people might think this has to do with Chicago, but it actually has to do with one state in particular, and that is the state of Ohio. Now, Ohio is not considered to be an important state globally, and there's a lot of effort to distract away from Ohio, say to New York, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., London, anywhere else but Ohio. And this is because Ohio is the heart 
of the paper breastplate. And Ohio, by far, has possibly the largest number of attorneys in the world, especially compared to the populace. There is no need for that many attorneys when it comes to the populace if those attorneys are there to serve the people, which they're not. Ohio is the heart of the paper breastplate globally because it is the centralized source of the attorney mechanism which runs the forgery uh, mechanism, basically. Also, Ohio is shaped like a heart, but that's not an accident. So you knew that they knew what they were doing and they set it up. And this all relates to their uh, election of the super being, the supreme being. So in the U.S. Constitution, uh, under Article 3, Section 3, it states, Treason against the United States shall consist only in loving war against them or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. That's very important. Now, they obfuscate that definition by saying treason, whoever owing allegiance to the United States levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort in the, within the United States or elsewhere. Right, so they take that section of the Constitution and then under fraud, they apply their own addition to it, which removes culpability from foreign actors and overseas investors or other individuals who do not quote unquote owe allegiance. Anybody who owes allegiance or doesn't owe allegiance to the United States is essentially cannot be, well, in their system anyway, all prosecution is fraud and fake and everything else anyway. But either way, uh, according to the way they've set it up, then somebody can go in here and claim this and say, it doesn't matter what I did because I'm not a U.S. citizen. I don't owe allegiance to the United States, right? Well, that would also mean that military members cannot be charged with treason because they swear allegiance to the U.S. Constitution not the United States. So that's kind of interesting what they did there. Also, if somebody owes allegiance, say, to the Bar Association or some other foreign entity because they swore allegiance to them, well, then according to this, they also can't be held accountable for treason. So who could possibly be held accountable for treason under this definition? And so they took that particular section and added it in there obviously, to obfuscate that section in the Constitution because they know and are currently engaged in the constitutional definition of treason. So for the evidence of this video, we will start by looking at the Cleveland Immigration Court, and this actually has to do with Objective 2, technically speaking, which has to do with distraction. Under the court staff, now this, of course, is Department of Justice, which we should understand is simply a title. It's an administrative instrument of a large, expansive foraging network where any single one of these attorneys in any place where they might physically be located, but most of them are congregated in Ohio, can put this letterhead or this stamp on any document and send it to somebody and they will capitulate because and only for the title that that person is using. We're going to see evidence of this later, even though that document itself is probably a forgery. Anyway, we have a, a, a person called David C. Whipple with the clerk Patricia McLean. Whipple, spelled W-H-I-P-P-L-E. That's probably a very, fairly uncommon name. And McLean, M-C-C-L-A-I-N, which is common, but we're going to see a very interesting pattern with that name in particular. In Kentucky, there is a firm called McLean Law Group, P-L-L-C. Now, this is listed in Louisville, that's how they say it, Kentucky, Lexington Road. Notice that Lexington Road, Louisville, Kentucky, right? This is a Jeffrey McLean, 
and uh, the registered agent is I. Patterson and Company CPAs PLLC in Lexington, Kentucky. See the joke there? The other one was Lexington Street. This is, or I think it's Lexington Road, or whatever. This is Lexington, Kentucky, and it's St. Teresa Drive. Now, who knows if these addresses even a real and if these documents these big all these documents we're looking at could be forged but the pattern in the documents demonstrates evidence of exactly that the attorney structure is all about document forgery to do those three objectives i listed now the name of the registered agent is dave whipple same spelling now what are the odds of that Two entities in Kentucky, both with the same last name, and this one with the same first name, as the same two people apparently listed on the register of the immigration court. Now, it's not listed here, but also that McLean Law Group are, you can probably guess what their um, focus is on. This brings us to an alleged uh, petition for writ of church horari in the Supreme Court of the United States, Gregory Ifesinaki Izayani, Plaintiff Appellant v. Jeffrey McLean, Holtzman McLean, and Londar. Huh. Let's look further. Here it states, briefly, the case originates from a case of Izayani, or Izayani, I don't know however you say that, Izayani, the Anderson v. CFG Health System, case number 23, blah, blah, blah. Because the attorney of CFG Health System, Mr. Jeffrey McLean's, here that's a misspelling, and like I said, this document might be a forgery. They do love to uh, manipulate name, uh, you know, change spellings and do all kinds of nonsense. Uh, and, of course, make up fake personages and steal the identity of real people and all kinds of wicked criminal acts right but it's an organizational operation that's the important thing to notice it's an organizational operation there are no attorneys that are not involved in this that's what their position was made for anyway engaged into falsification of subpoena using the act of impersonation as an officer of the new jersey district court to serve subpoena to union county college and essex county college requesting all employment record of the pro se without pro se consent now what i would like to know is if this is true how exactly did this person serve a subpoena under the name of the New Jersey District Court? Did they have the letterhead or the stamp? And in that case, how many attorneys, and I would bet all, have the letterhead or the stamp? Or the bigger question, of course, is how many courts do every does every attorney all scattered everywhere and mostly centralized in Ohio. How many of those attorneys have multiple letterheads and stamps from various courts that they can go under the guise of that entity and force people to do things that they otherwise wouldn't do because they're adhering to the threat of force coming from a title and fraudulent pretense. Anyway. The Essex County College refused to send all employment documents because they identified that Pro Se never consents to the request. Union County College Human Resources out of wickedness and racial discrimination. And here's one of the big reasons why I think this is forgery, because it's all about distracting your attention, but doing it in a certain way that it manipulates your perception. Right. Anyway, forwarded all employment record the Pro Se to the defendant attorney, Mr. Jeffrey McLean's with help. The pro se consent, which is federal privacy right violation. The Human Resources Department of Union County College provide the attorney with pro se master's academic transcripts from different universities which contain the pro social security numbers, date of birth, pro se certificates, pro se resume, marital status, pay stub, etc. At the request of fraudulent subpoena, which is privacy right violation because this is not a medical record. Now, I don't need to get into the rest of this. Obviously, this is a document listing exactly what they do, which is the forged documents. So there's your half-truth. Now, the lie in this is that the person that they went after was a professor. They wouldn't do that. That's all about running the same game where they, they orchestrate your perception to protect their minions, right? Professors are part of the system, too. And most of the things, when they do this stuff, most of the legitimate claims against this are suppressed. You won't find them, you won't see them, because this paper forging 
uh, construction gave, gives them leverage over all of the search engines and companies and everything, right? Is that, as certain individuals say, attorneys run everything. So the fact that we're able to see this and the fact that it's apparently being done against a professor and the fact that it's apparently being done, being done on racial grounds and other things like that all tells you that this is being written specifically with the the purpose of obfuscating your perception. However, it's a half-truth because they actually do do this stuff, and they do this stuff to real people all over the place. There's real consequences to this. And naturally, when all those immigrants who have been so heavily abused by these fraudsters decide to retaliate, they can point the finger at them and say, see, invasion, violent immigrants over there. Go look at them, don't look at us, essentially. And this is, ironically, being perpetrated by, in conjunction with, a large number of foreign actors. So they know what they're doing when they navigate people's attention towards uh, others based off of their national origin, their co skin color, etc. Now, the next element in this structure, we actually sort of skipped the first one as far as setting it up goes, but we'll come back to that one. And we'll move on to the third one, which is steal everything, which includes children. We find the individual Rhonda L. Comer, who is listed as a lawyer, a construction litigation, healthcare law, insurance litigation, business, healthcare, corporate, professional malpractice. This is the person behind something called Hugs. You'll see at the bottom of this document, uh, along with all the other creepy things that they have. This states the Hugs Help Us Grow Safely program is a community-based training program that teaches strategies to prevent negative adult-child interactions. So that's obviously about destroyed families, specifically for the object of take, getting access to the children. Now, this Rhonda L. Comer is behind a company called Kids For Sure Incorporated, which, considering the context of child trafficking, that's not a creepy name at all. Also, this Rhonda L. Comer is listed on a document called Children's Surgical Associates Corp. Listed out of Ohio at 700 Children's Drive with Robert E. Sickles, Esquire. Now, on this document, there's three other people, but the main one to focus on is somebody called Rick Miller, the alleged president of this entity, Children's uh, Surgical Association. There's, of course, Rhonda Comer, Andrew Leno Bell, and Luke Brown, and, of course, they all use the address 700 Children's Drive, now, there's also a entity called Naranja, that would be like orange in Spanish, Optimist Club Incorporated. This is an allegedly athletic organization, Youth Optimist Sports. It has to do with youth, so children. On this document, you have Rhonda L. Comer, or at least here it just says Rhonda Comer. And the address listed is in Miami, Florida. Apparently no relation to Ohio. Now in Ohio, we have the Northwest Children's Community Practices LLC with a Rhonda L. Comer. Also, there is a Richard J. Miller. Remember, on the other document, it was Rick Miller. Hmm. The pattern is getting clearer. Now, the Northwest Children's Community Practices, LLC, with, of course, the same people on it, we should notice the name Voris, or Voris, Voris, probably, it's uh, expected it's Dutch, Sater, Seymour, and Pease, LLP, because that's a name that's going to be popping up on other documents. Now, in Virginia, there is an entity called Nationwide Children's Hospital, with jurisdiction of Ohio. And jurisdiction is probably not the right word, but most people don't understand what the word really means, which, of course, is a spoken oath. But that's a video I already did before. 
Now on the list, also if you'll notice that the date it was formed was apparently 1897, we have Richard J. Miller, Rhonda L. Comer, Esquire. And then there's three other names here. So there we've got more patterns of those two names specifically uh, correlated together. Now the Richard J. Miller Jr. Blank Rome LLP, and this is for sure fake, Blank Rome LLP is pleased to announce that Richard J. Miller Jr. has joined the firm as a partner in the Tax Benefits and Private Client Group. It's important to notice that word there, tax. Rich is based in the firm's New York office. He joins from one of New York's oldest law firms, Morris and McVeigh LLP, where Rich previously served as managing partner. Rich focuses his practice on trusts, estate planning, tax, and the administration, litigation, and representation of cultural institutions. Hmm. So, how likely is it that there is an incorporation in the United Kingdom called Eddie Stone Miller Limited? which engages in legal and accounting services, accounting, bookkeeping, and auditing services, tax consultancy, accounting, and auditing activities. Hmm. Also, we have a Daffern's LLP with a one Mr. Richard Julian Miller out of the United Kingdom. Here's a Richard J. Miller Limited, and this is uh, from West... Co West Midlands, United Kingdom. Here on this document, we have also a Lisa Juliet Miller at West Midlands, nationality British, and occupation as teacher. That's very important right there, that occupation designator as teacher. There's a lot, large number of filings, and we have uh, Lisa Miller as the secretary twice and vice president of different companies organized in Pennsylvania. She's apparently vice president and treasurer of a Miller Truck and Crane Incorporated and also Miller and Reese Bus Company Incorporated out of Pennsylvania. Now a lot of this stuff may possibly be mixed in with legitimate because they do like to do that as part of a laundering practice and they like to steal people's identity and things like that. So, like I said, it is very important to understand these things when looking at such an extensive network of document forgeries. Now, in Ohio, we have the Perkins Local Schools PTO Incorporated, a Lisa Miller with a Ohio Sandusky address. Now, the Lisa Miller in the UK was allegedly a teacher. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Also, this uh, Lisa Miller, with now a Alliance, Ohio address, is signed on a document titled Pathstone Development Corporation of Ohio. Here we have it again, but this is a different one. This is Pathstone Corporation, just, just that, nothing else. Also, Lisa Miller. Also on this document, we have a Stuart J. Mitchell. Now that name is going to be important as well. And we have the document that links his name to Lisa Miller, which of course links to Richard Miller, which links to Rhonda L. Comer. So let's see where Stuart J. Mitchell is from, shall we? If you search Stuart J. Mitchell, you will get hits of out of New York, just like with uh, the Richard J. Mitchell or Miller. Yeah, Richard J. Miller. And it's possible that these people don't exist. They're fake names, but it's important to see the pattern with the use. Anyway, this one states uh, Rochester, New York, Stuart J. Miller Mitchell, President and Chief Executive Officer of Pathstone Corporation. So we go to Virginia, we find Pathstone Corporation Jurisdiction, New York. And we have a person called K. Washington, apparently as the officer of the corporation. And there we have our Stuart Mitchell with a Rochester, Rochester, New York address. President, CEO. Also, we have Supreme Systems Incorporated. 
jurisdiction, Texas. Now, this has the stamp CT Corporation system. I did a video on this before. CT Corporation system is an entity, according to their one of their articles on corporation, which is very old. They were formed to provide services for the Bar Association globally, right? So whenever that stamp is on there, you know it's attorneys doing it, and that stamp, when that you see that CT Corporation system, you can almost be certain that not only is it illegitimate, but it is part of the operation of uh, war, really. Operation of, of war between enemies, both foreign and domestic, working in collusion together. Here we find the name Stuart Mitchell with a Texas address, and that name is listed under Chief Financial Officer. Next, we have the Woodbridge Rotary Foundation, and this is out of apparently VA jurisdiction. Here we have Stuart Mitchell, an individual, as the director of the corporation with a Woodbridge, Virginia address, uh, Prince William County. There's Stuart Mitchell with a different Woodbridge address is from the above. And we have some other names there, which I did not look into, but I'm sure would render some pretty interesting patterns. So in the United Kingdom, uh, naturally, we have a Mr. Stuart John Mitchell, civil engineer, allegedly, of British nationality. And the name of this company is LJH Management Consultants LTD. Now we are going to see that name again, LGH Management Consultants LTD. And it is very interesting, the connection of the name of the company and of the individual. Here we have a Stuart Mitchell and a Sharon Mitchell. Now in Ohio, or yes, this is Ohio, we have a document titled LGH Limited. And this has an Ohio address on it. Let's see who the agent for it is. Here we have a Lawrence C. Lichtig, Judith Gale Lichtig and Howard Lichtig for LGH Limited, right? Limited is a, generally speaking, a European designator for LLC. Now, under the Certificate of Limited Partnership, we have Judith G. Lichtig, and this is for a document, document called Enter Twin LTD. Considering the movement of children, I suspect this company has a particular focus, and it's certainly a creepy name. Now, Lawrence C. Lichtig, or Lichtig, in 1991 received a Public Servant of the Year Award for work on the UH Board of Zoning Appeals. Now, considering the previous videos I did talking about the code enforcement, who attempt to leverage zoning codes to steal land, it's no surprise that we find that engaged in the system. This takes us to a particular building in Columbus, Ohio, the exact center of the state of Ohio, which kind of looks like a wheel. Columbus looks like a wheel and the entire state kind of looks like a wheel. But it is a centralized heart mechanism, just like the heart pushes and pumps blood to different parts of the body. So does this heart push and pump paper to many parts of the globe or their body, their super being, as it were. Now, this building is called Levesque Tower. And this name is going to have some other interesting patterns associated with it, which relate to the content of this video, of course. In Florida, we have a document, Central Leasing of Tampa, Incorporated, with the names Levesque Colin S. and Levesque Catherine S. Now, this document was filed in 1987. Now, on a document under Catherine S. Levesque, 
There is a particular address listed at Africa Road, Galena, Ohio, 43021. What's also interesting is that a company alongside that name is the Penn York Properties Incorporated, which has an address at 50 West Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio, uh, 43215. Also in Ohio, there is a Levesque Enterprises with a Catherine S. Levesque, and the business and operations in this date is 1971, allegedly. However, for this document, it specifies real estate as the purpose and provides that 50 West Broad Street uh, address that was also provided by the Penn York Properties. Additionally, there's a document out of Ohio called VLV LLC by Barbara V. Levesque filed much more recently than the others in 2011, listing the Africa Road, Galena, Ohio, 43021, and the specific street address 6525, which is the same address given by this Catherine S. Levac at the first document, where then the second document was using the address as the Penn York uh, properties. Now, if you look up Westerville zip codes, the zip codes for Westerville are 43081, 43082, 43086. Okay? So those zip codes are not the same as Galena. The Galena zip codes, or zip code, singular, is 43021. That is the same zip code used on those documents. However, if you put in 6525 Africa Road, Galena, Ohio, you will get 6525 Africa Road, Westerville, Ohio. So that's interesting, and it was done on two separate documents, allegedly filed many years apart, so it wasn't an accident that that address was used. It also wasn't an accident that it is probably fake. Now this takes us to a document called First Levesque LLC, and there's that stamp, CT Corporation System. On this document, an individual, Stephen Schwartz, or Schwartz, is listed as the manager, agent, etc. Now, also on this document, First Levesque LLC, we have a Marta Pieter Zikowski, Pieter Zikowski, Pieter Zikowski, that's a hard name to say, with an address of Rosemont, Illinois. Marta Pieter Zikowski. Also on this document is Stephen L. Schwartz. Same name. Now, Marta Pietrzykowski, Director of Legal Services at First Hospitality. Marta Pietrzykowski has extensive experience in the legal field, and of course this will all be fake, particularly in the hospitality industry. Marta began her career as a legal services manager at Hyatt Hotels Corporation in 1999, where they oversaw various legal and operational functions. 2001, Marta joined First Hospitality Group as the director of legal services, where they built the corporate legal department from scratch, blah, blah, blah. Marta's responsibilities included managing the legal aspects of the first hotel portfolio, such as new construction acquisitions and distresses. The acquisitions part is probably the important one. Marta also played a key role in licensing and permitting, saving the company significant attorney fees. Marta demonstrated expertise in corporate compliance, prepared various legal and documents and reports. Marta's work at First Hospitality Group was, transform, was, was a transformational success for the company in meeting risk management, compliance, and business growth goals. Marta Pietrzykowski has pursued higher education in the field of business and management. Marta obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in Business and Hospitality Management from the University of Phoenix. Later, they pursued a Master of Business Administration MBA degree with specialization in Business Administration Management General, also from the University of Phoenix. Marta is expected to complete their MBA program in 2022. So, this individual, fake or otherwise, is not listed with a law degree. That's definitely important to notice, considering the fact that most people who quote-unquote practice law without a license, generally speaking, get the book thrown at them, proverbially, by this very mechanism of forgeries, fraudulent pretense, etc. And yet this individual can do all this stuff without a law degree or a license. 
Not only that, also the part in the licensing and permitting of all things. So that's a slap in the face, but it gets worse. Here we have AP Publishing Company, which lists as its purpose as to carry on and conduct the business of acquiring and developing real estate. Now, what was that word again that she was engaged in? Acquisitions, right? And in general, to do all things necessary for or incidental to the conduct of said business. Now, the name on this document is a Andresi, I believe that would probably be Andre, Pieter Sikowski, and that's the incorporator. Same last name as our Marta character. Now, there's a Andre, spelled with the J this time, instead of a Y, Pieter Zikowski, on Facebook. And look at that. He's wearing the usual typical uniform of the khaki pants and white button-down shirt on the beach, probably in Florida. Now, there's a Michael Pietruszykowski, who has listed as under family members an uncle of Kurzestoff Pietruszykowski. Now, they all have the same name as this Marta person, but I could not find any direct link as far as overt evidence, other than the name, of course, that that individual is not related. Although I do, or that that individual is related, but I do believe that they are all related. That's a very strange name if these are, in fact, real people. Now, this Michael Piedrzykowski apparently works as a bank examiner at the United States Department of the Treasury. So this stuff is getting even more interesting, isn't it? Worked at a Bank of America Merrill Lynch and worked at J.P. Morgan Tra Chase, studied finance at Cleveland State University, studies MBA, Master's in Business Administration at Ohio University, and went to Garfield Heights High School in class of 2007, apparently. So there are some similarities unfolding about uh, positions being occupied and uh, the uh, overall operation being conducted. So when we look at this Kurzestoff, Pietruszowski, Facebook profile, there's not much information, but it does say it's from Chiano Vich, however you say that, and lives in Cleveland, Ohio. In Virginia, there is a company called Bolex Incorporated with that stamp of CT Corporation System. Now, on this company, we have the Stephen Schwartz character and the Andrew Schwartz character as well. Now, out of Ohio, there's a document called Lion First Responders PPE Incorporated with an Andrew Schwartz Incorporator. Next, we have Enterprise Gas and Oil Incorporated. Here you'll find the name Rudolph J. Schwartz. Also, we have an R.J. Schwartz on Enterprise Energy Partners. There's an R.J. Schwartz uh, as president of Enterprise Production Incorporated, which has changed its name to Enterprise Petroleum Incorporated. Also, we have Enterprise Well Services. And this uh, is a company that does servicing in oil and gas wells. And we have the name R.J. Schwartz, Enterprise Gas and Oil Incorporated. And under Enterprise Drilling Incorporated, we have the name C. Arthur Morrow. And this document for original point of agent of Unitel Incorporated has that same name that we saw on other documents for East Sater, Seymour, and Peas. Or at least one other document, but I've seen it on many other documents anyway, which I haven't included in this video. But uh, the name on this one is Colin Levesque Incorporator. So that ties it up all nicely and really gives you evidence and understanding of specifically what is going on here and for what purposes attorneys really serve. In order to restore the Republic, in order to restore law and order, in order to remove uh, liars, thieves, traffickers, murderers, and everything else, this whole document forging system has to be destroyed and brought down. And the best way to do that is to go after the individuals that are doing it. Unfortunately, with these documents, all are suspect. 
because of all of the forgeries, because the excessive amount of them, which makes, of course, it difficult to find legitimate information at all. So that's a difficult thing. But you can pretty much be uh, certain, in some cases, that every single attorney is a functionary in this operation. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to my channel, uh, join my newly formed Discord. There's free books available, the links, and you may support my work at any of the options. Thank you.